this whole setup you see here right in front of you four camera angles and upgraded mics i've been able to pretty much fund mostly through twitch so it takes a while to kind of get that going but if you're willing to grind through it and you believe you're putting out content that people can appreciate you can totally make a decent amount of bread from doing it and i treat it like a part-time gig at the moment Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Jazz Biz 101. Uh, we've been interviewing a number of people so far. Uh, today we have our very special guest, Don Palombi. He's a jazz drummer um, that I met actually through uh, Rutgers program, uh, the jazz performance program. And also we've been playing together through some of the jam sessions hosted by the New Brunswick Jazz Project, but also on some different gigs and some different hits and stuff like that. Um, and I'm just going to let, you know, Dom talk a little bit more about what he does. Well, first, Peter, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Uh, always been a fan of Yardbird Entertainment and uh, happy to be supplying some information uh, for everybody today that decides to come and watch. Uh, like Peter said, I'm a drummer, freelance musician. I've been playing drums for 16 years. And uh, not only that, I'm a pianist, a band leader, educator. Uh, but as of lately, as about a year and a half ago, I've been starting to work into being more of a content creator and also streaming on Twitch. Streaming on Twitch, I have to tell the story like this uh, every time because I feel like it only makes more sense because that's how I got involved into it. About three years ago, uh, a group of colleagues from Rutgers, after I graduated school, told me about this gaming convention called PAX East that was held in Boston. It was a three-day convention. Uh, didn't know what it was, but I was like, heck, it sounds like a fun time to hang out with some friends and do all that. We hang out for a weekend playing all sorts of video games, entering tournaments. Uh, it's a huge convention held at Boston Convention Center. Uh, where a bunch of gaming companies uh, are all showing off their latest products or stuff that they can sell. Uh, there's a bunch of merchandise and stuff there, but there's also a bunch of panels, concerts, and great uh, events that I believe any convention has. There was a main stage concert series that they had on a Saturday night, I believe. But it, throughout the whole weekend, they had this thing called a jam space, which uh, was held by this convention that I now know of called MAGFest. I'll get to that in a little bit. I go to this jam space to draw from my friends because I was like, hey, I need to play drums or something. I haven't played drums in like three days or so, so I needed to get some practice. So I go to this jam space. Apparently, it was like a little jam session that we know of that we've been to like New Jersey or New York uh, where people are going up on stage uh, and playing what I wasn't sure of at the time, video game music. This band called the Super Soul Bros was actually leading this jam session on this last day of the convention on Sunday. Um, the Soul Bros are a funk soul video game band based out of San Jose, California. I decide to get on the list to, to, to play a song or something, and I tried to pick something that I knew. Um, and the tune I remember playing at the time was Saria Song, Lost Woods from The Legend of Zelda. And it was, it was a, actually a really cool arrangement. We did like a halftime funk uh, version of the tune, which is fun. The Soul Bros were doing their own funk arrangement of that tune. And they do all sorts of great classic arrangements, funk arrangements of video game tunes. Um, that session happened. I meet some of the guys from the band, uh, say, see you later, and, you know, the convention's over. The following year comes up, uh, and the same band was headlining uh, the main stage concerts that weekend for the following year at PAX East. And I was like, huh, I know these guys. Uh, so I decided to look into it, find out who they were, and I found the drummer, Chris Heyman, on Facebook and messaged him and was like, hey, uh, I don't know if you remember me. Uh, I played with you guys on this jam session last year at PAX East and really liked what you guys were doing. And he was like, oh, yeah, I remember you, man. You were the drummer that didn't suck, and it was cool and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I met up with them uh, during the weekend and started to get to know Robbie Benson, the keyboard player, who's the band leader. He's an absolute beast. Alex, the tenor sax player. Um, Christian, who's this awesome trombone player. Uh, and Brian Shu is an incredible guitarist. They're all awesome guys, excellent musicians, and got to hang out with them backstage uh after that weekend was over me and chris started talking a lot he's now one of my best friends closest friends uh and i was like hey i'd like to visit you in san jose and hang out with you a little bit more and stuff and he's like yeah sure come over so i 
uh, in the middle of the summer, flew from New Jersey to San Jose to hang out with these guys. And uh, coincidentally, we streamed on their Twitch page. I, I just started to hear about Twitch music uh, through them. And uh, as soon as that weekend happened, I grabbed my phone, started to try to do this whole streaming, my, streaming thing myself. And a year and a half later, here I am, uh, almost you know, treating this streaming thing as a part-time gig. So, but that's, I have to tell the story like that. Cause that's, that's how I got interested or into, uh, Twitch in general. Yeah. Just so the audience knows, uh, you know, I've been, I actually just, uh, been watching some of more Dom's streams on Twitch more recently. And, uh, it's pretty amazing what he does. Uh, I was telling him I was very overwhelmed at first, uh, when I first, because entered the platform, uh, it's a completely different world. Um, I used to play video games myself growing up. And so like, I knew that it was there for that, um, before, but, uh, knowing that there was music on there, was kind of new to me. Um, so, you know, maybe Dom, you could just talk to the audience to let them know what Twitch is kind of about and, uh, just talk a little bit about the platform. Yeah, so Twitch, uh, if I recall correctly, I, I could be wrong, but I think it's at least seven or eight years old at this point. Um, and at the time, I think when it first uh, jumped on, uh, it was mostly known for video gamers. So people playing, you know, esports players, anybody that's a full time content creator, or a full avid gamer, uh, they go online, live stream themselves playing, you know, X video game. And, you know, people can actually make a serious living playing video games, streaming it on Twitch. There's so many different ways of monetization with people supporting. I, I have heard about Twitch when I was growing up and I always played games when I was a kid. Uh, but it was funny to, like, start getting involved in the process. Yes, it was overwhelming when I first got started streaming, too. There were I think there were definitely at least a few uh, prominent music streamers that were streaming on Twitch at the time when there wasn't a music section. I think actually even before there was a music section, there was a creative section, if I recall correctly. Um, so it's very funny how much uh, Twitch has, I guess, uh, started to become more of a generic streaming platform versus a video game focus. Now, granted, people still watch people playing, you know, like Fortnite, Apex Legends, League of Legends, if you will. Uh, the new Animal Crossing just came out today, so a heck ton of people are going to be mm -hmm. playing, uh, streaming Animal Crossing. It, it's like it's still all video game focus but there's sections on there that are called like just chatting uh people do art kind of stuff on there people do music there's somebody that i would like to watch on occasion that's a really great cook so you can you can technically stream whatever you want on twitch as long as you're agreeing to their terms of service which is a pretty cool factor about that yeah definitely and um you know it's a niche community this kind of like video game music kind of thing but it's a big community once you're inside it and there's a whole repertoire that it's like all the all those people know and you know um it's kind of similar to jazz in yeah. those respects that's the funny thing that i've been really digging lately is the music particularly um thanks to the soul bros i got to hang out with them get to know them and not only did i get to learn more of their takes on classic video games uh but knowing music from other great games too um, they took me to that convention MAGFest that I brought uh, brought up earlier. And that's where I got to meet uh, more musicians that are more, you know, along the lines of, you know, dedicated into the video game music scene. It's a it's a it's a small niche scene when you hear about it, but it's way larger than you than, you know. So like guys that I know at this point that are good friends of mine, Insane in the Rain, who's an excellent YouTuber. He's finishing up his degree at Berkeley. Um, Patrick Bartley, he leads the J Music Ensemble, and all those guys are fantastic musicians based out of New York City. Uh, Max Boyko, he leads his own uh, group, VGM Collective, that I've played with a couple times. And then we all know Charlie Rosen and his 8-Bit Big, Big, Big Band. Um, you know, these all these gents uh, or musicians are great examples of starting to really try to use the uh, potential of video game music. And that's why I love it so much, because it's it's so different and I feel like it's not getting as much recognition as it is until it is now. Um, and it's without also a generational Twitch, thing too. Yeah. Without yeah. Twitch, I wouldn't have really figured or like started to getting hip to all that sort of stuff. You know, I'm, I don't call myself an avid gamer. I've been playing way more games now than I have ever before. Um, but it, streaming on Twitch and playing to a lot of video game tunes has started to really, 
uh, concur my appreciation for the music in itself too, mm. um, which is also great. So yeah, the scene is, is the scene is incredible to be quite honest. I'm I'm only looking forward to seeing how much bigger it can grow. Yeah, that's amazing, definitely. And uh, maybe you know, I think the audience would definitely like to know, um, you know, how does Twitch work? Like, um, how do you get into streaming? But also, what is your setup? And you know, maybe you could just walk us through about how this all works together. so the first yeah so the first ever stream i did was straight up right on my phone actually because of the the power of technology that we have nowadays mm -hmm. we can almost literally do anything on our cell phone device um there's this app that's called uh stream labs uh where they actually have their own you know streaming service that you can literally just start straight up on your phone so this camera angle that you see uh i used to plop my phone and, and perch over my drum set and I would just start playing to music and have to, you know, people would see my stream from my cell phone days. Um, Twitch is a dedicated live streaming platform. Uh, so the way it works, it's similar to YouTube, but uh, YouTube is more for content that is to be rewatched and uh, contained. Whereas like how we're having a conversation now, uh, Twitch, you can interact with people. I like to describe it as it's a worldwide stage at the comfort of your own home because it's the internet. Yeah, the internet has a way wider outreach than you know playing at a jazz club with a hundred or two hundred people in there. Right. You know, you can only meet so many people from the world that come to this one small location. Whereas anybody in the world can technically come to, you know, my parents basement if you will <laughs> my studio setup my studio setup yeah yeah we can say that <laughs> yeah so it's it's but it's the powerful magic of like performing i like to uh, uh equip i like to compare twitch uh my twitch streaming life to my jazz performance life anytime i have gigs you know i treat a stream like a gig like i'm playing you know but it's like I also like get the chance to practice, get to have a conversation with people in chat. Um, you know, it's it's such a different experience that I've been really trying to, you know, see what else I can get out of. So anybody can stream on Twitch. Anybody can watch on Twitch. It's totally free to use. Uh, it's uh, a fun way to try to do something different, to be quite honest. And heck, I've been having a lot of fun doing it and messing around with it. Um, the minimum things that you only need is a, is a decent microphone, uh, a web a working webcam a decent computer uh and uh something to capture your audio like an interface or something you don't need you know all the fanciest stuff in the world to stream at all at, at anywhere heck you know like i said i started on my phone so anybody can download a specific broadcasting app to start streaming to twitch um it just takes a while uh, the first thing I did, I guess, the first step when you get on the Twitch is you try to work up to, if you want to make money uh, through Twitch, you need to build your Twitch account to an affiliate status. Um, those requirements have changed over the past year. So the current requirements are you need to reach 50 followers, you need to stream for eight hours, uh, you need to stream on seven different days and have an average of three people watching you. Um, and there, those are relatively easy for you to do, actually, once you get started. Um, I treat Twitch a lot like how we would going out to, you know, sessions or meeting musicians or going to gigs and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. the video you did with Justin Jones, yes, uh, the last time mm -hmm. is a perfect example of how you can kind of get around on Twitch is you watch a lot of other streamers. You try to be a part of other people's communities. And then, you know, when the time comes, you can say, hey, I also do this as well. Uh, I would love for you guys to come and check me out. Um, it's a grind. It's a real grind like anything. So it's, it took me, you know, a year and a half work, worth of time to get the stream where it is. Uh, and I have a decent following of people that like to watch me. And, you know, we have a fun time every time I go live. Um, and then, like I said, the beauty of Twitch is you can technically stream whatever ever you want as long as it follows Twitch's terms of service. It's my, my version of a games console. I mean, like, aren't I technically playing a video game? What up, Bearded? Working from home. That's awesome to hear, Salt. I'm glad you're staying healthy.
Wow, that's a crazy track. That is an absolutely crazy track. I'll tell you what, man. Uh, <laughs> Sonic Colors. How many different versions of Sonic games are out there now? And I understand there's probably like, uh, there's all different sorts of different formats of Sonic. I just didn't play much of Sonic growing up, man. It feels bad. I, I feels bad, man. It feels bad, man, that it's like I didn't get to experience some of those games as a kid and all that sort of stuff. Bigo, thank you again for gifting those five subs, you generous, awesome human being. So, yeah, so that was an example of uh, one of the streams that Don would usually do. Um, so, you know, if you're interested, you know, we'll definitely link to his channel and um, right down here in the show notes. But uh, maybe you could just talk a little bit about how the monetization works. Once you reach affiliate status, that's mm -hmm. when you're able to get that subscribe button uh, on your page. That subscribe button is only one of the few is one of the few ways that people can actually, you know, start making money on the on the platform, um, you know. So there's a lot of different ways that Twitch offers uh, where people can, you know, help support the streamer. It's like a Patreon or, you know, a virtual tip jar, if you will. Um, there are other websites that allow direct donations uh, so they can queue alerts off in your stream. So if you've seen one of my streams previously, when somebody subscribes, there's a bunch of stuff that pops up on the screen. Uh, I, I, I make an alert and a sound effect go off because, hey, it's a special moment that that somebody decides to, you know, actually help and consider supporting what I do, most importantly. So there's three different tiers that they have for subscriptions. Uh, tier one is $4.99 a month. Uh, tier two is $9.99 a month. And I believe tier three is $24.99 a month. Um, when you subscribe to any Twitch streamer, they have what are e small custom emotes or emoticons like how we have. Um, but I've made specific emotes and designed or I've had an artist, a couple of artists design specific emotes for my channel that they could spam all over Twitch for a month. Um, now, with those tiers and uh, their other currency called bits, which are animated uh, emoticons, uh, one bit equals one cent. Uh, and you can buy, I guess, as many bits as you want, depending on how much money you're willing to spend. Um, and people can cheer, uh, cheer, cheer bits, if you will, uh, to trigger them off and give them to whoever streamers they want. It's not limited to just one person. When they buy that currency, they can use it all over Twitch, which is kind of cool. Um, Twitch, I know, I believe, takes half of all subscriptions and bits. If you're partnered on Twitch, I think that rate is negotiable or uh, streamers get a little bit more than half. Uh, so currently where I'm at, I make, you know, let's say 250 uh, for every tier one sub, um, five bucks for every tier two and 1250 for every tier three sub. Um, the tier two and the tier three subs give an additional uh, emote each. So one emote each, but the tier one subs like unlock seven of them, uh, if you will. Um, and that's uh, the subscriber count can change every month. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways outside of just normally subbing. People can gift subs to other people if you're feeling generous or if you have sub goals like Peter tuned into uh, a, a cooking stream I did with my mom. Uh, I, made a, I made a sub goal incentive that month before saying if we reach 200 subscriptions, I will promise a cooking stream in the near future. Streamers can get creative with whatever kind of... Uh, incentives that they want to do uh, in order to get more support from the community i have had donation goals uh met in the past where you know this whole setup you see here right in front of you uh i've i've been able to pretty much fund mostly through twitch you know i wouldn't have four camera angles and you know upgraded mics now because uh if it weren't for starting this whole twitch stream so i i, I think if i remember correctly the first time i actually got a payout from twitch uh, it, it wasn't till like three or four months after I was, after I've been streaming on the platform and things started to really cook up a little bit. Um, so it takes a while to kind of get that going, but if you're willing to grind through it and you believe you're putting out content that people can appreciate, you know, you can do, you can totally make a decent amount of bread, um, from doing it. And I treat it like a part-time gig at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's one of the ways. And then I think I, I've said it before, but people can donate directly to you via PayPal as well, um, cutting Twitch out as the middleman so they can support you directly from uh, from PayPal as well. Yeah. Wow. That's a, 
a lot of different ways. And um, I was, think yeah, if I were to like kind of sum up the subscription part of it, it's like depending on the level of subscription that they get, they can interact with you more in different ways through the emoticons and kind of like different fun ways to yeah the streamer yeah. has the responsibility to kind of like choose how much more stuff uh your subs can get versus anybody anybody in chat can, like i said can watch twitch for free it is totally free to make an account um and uh, if people that want to help support um i try to give them extra benefits you know i call them my subs my peeps uh pun intended because it's literally just a joke but like i literally have a peep <laughs> on my floor tom right right yeah that's what that's what i love about like when i was watching uh you know that that cooking stream that you did it's like uh you make it really fun for people to interact and so what happens is it it's like it creates this kind of uh entertaining factor to anything that you do um and i i think twitch does a is a good platform for uh people to get into that kind of form of entertainment as well you know yeah, interaction there's there's a lot to be said with just performing or, or being yourself on Twitch, you know, like for me, especially, I guess like when I was growing up, I was always a shy guy or I was always a shy kid and having conversations with people wasn't always the easiest thing for me. Um, growing up, you know, more and more I'm starting to get used to just, you know, continuing conversation. When you're a streamer, you have to continually feel, fill space. You always have to kind of get out of your comfort zone and and start talking to people regularly so it's even if you feel like you have something that you already said and you don't have anything to say you still need to say something in order to keep people engaged because uh, people are taking the time to watch your stream uh and the biggest challenge of that is you know how do you continually stay uh entertaining you know outside of me playing drums like the crazy part is when i do my drum requests or i'm playing to youtube links and shedding and stuff like that uh, I'm still actually trying to talk the chat on top of that. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I feel like I'm I'm multitasking at times where I'm playing drums and then I'm talking to people at the same time, trying to hold a conversation <laughs> while that's going on. Yeah, a lot of multitasking going on. I definitely saw that. No doubt about it. Can, it. it can get done, but it's 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 still fun in, in any way, shape or form. How long does it take to build an audience and uh, what are your ways of doing that? It's very funny. Um, I think that is a question that anybody that decides to start doing any form of content creation, not just streaming in general, um, they need to ask themselves of how they want to build their audience. For me, my my simplest thing I was thinking about is I want to create a, a stream or I want to create an atmosphere where anybody can come in, listen to music, and enjoy themselves. Uh, you know, bar none. Uh, even if they're not a jazz enthusiast, even if they're not somebody that like listens to our music or the music that we're into all the time, I wanted to create an atmosphere uh, and and have an audience of people that appreciate, you know, for me being as serious as, as I am about my craft, about what I do uh, as a professional. And additionally, you know, just create a space where anybody just can come and chill if they're having a hard day, if they you know need something to do or need background music uh along those lines too so uh, uh, the audience thing i think is something that everybody has to ask themselves depending on what they're trying to do with their content um because the more defined you are about your audience the more clear that path is going to be um how long it takes that also depends on how much time they're willing to put in for me you know i'm always trying to grow my stream but as of late i'm really trying to focus on building my social media and building my brand so i have something to showcase for when i start to like do things with other people or you know let's say i'm going back out into new york and i'm trying to book some gigs with a group or something i can show this is what i have to offer this is what i'm all about and that stuff so there's nothing um there's nothing that's necessarily like um hindering me from not having extra work along those lines um the big thing i i guess i was getting into was when i got out of school i started doing my own thing and i feel like a lot of us, uh, not just myself included, we didn't really know what to do once we got out of college. So we started to do our own projects and pursue our own things because, you know, mm -hmm. we only had so much information. Um, after about a couple of years of that, I was like, hmm, you know, it's not necessarily working out per se. Things have been good. But at the same time, I feel like I need to work on my social media game a little bit more and 
try to see what I can do on the internet uh, to kind of build up a following or building up more of an audience in general. So that's a funny question that you ask because it's still something that I'm continually working on or still trying to have a clearer idea of, if that makes sense. Yeah. I think, you know, the reason I'm also asking a question is because there are a lot of people who are thinking about jumping on it now and kind of like expecting certain kind of results, seeing how you have been doing it for a while. I think you have a different perspective as to like what to expect when you first get on the platform. Because you were saying yeah. like, you know, you put in the work to kind of, um, you know, network with other people on the platform as well and to kind of be part of the community just like anything else. What's a good place to kind of start and um, what are some ways to kind of just like get the stuff for, out there? Yeah. For anybody that is looking to get started on Twitch, I would recommend watching some other people first before you start streaming. Um, I think it, it goes to show Pat Bartley made a really good point about this. He's a big inspiration to me at this point because I've met him and a lot of the other video game musicians because of Twitch, funny enough. Um, he made a really good point about this where it's like how we study the greats. It's like how we study musicians that came before us, you know, McCoy Tyner, jo John Coltrane, Miles Davis, uh, Philly Joe Jones, all the greats. If we listen to their recordings and see how they do that and try to replicate what they do, it's taking the same tradition, but I think it makes more sense. If you watch streamers, if you go on a Twitch and you just browse and try to find out who are some streamers that you like to watch that are successful mm. uh, and try to emulate them in those ways. Uh, that wasn't necessarily something that I did when I first got started, um, but I took a lot of time when I wasn't streaming watching other fellow drum streamers or watching other fellow music streamers that I really enjoyed and supported them and became a part of their communities. So those people could like come and check me out as well but i wasn't also tr i wasn't just doing it for the clout most importantly i think that's a big um thing a lot of people should realize I, I i'm not trying to do this for just getting people to watch my stream i'm doing this because i care about the other people that i'm watching i'm trying to right put on the view right. put on, putting on the viewer's shoes versus putting on the streamer shoes yes um yeah. when i started out early i i i mixed those two quite a lot and at, there were times where you know i said hey i'm gonna go stream i can't stay for my, for long gotta catch you later it's very rude to type that into somebody else's streamers chat because you're taking the spotlight off of somebody else uh mm -hmm. and i learned that the hard way i learned that the hard way from you know a couple friends of mine saying hey can you please stop doing that it's really rude and i'm like sorry my bad so anybody that's trying to get started i would say browse on Twitch a little bit first, or if you find a different streaming platform, there's like a bunch of other different streaming platforms too. There's like Mixer um, that's owned by Microsoft, uh, uh, but I think they do things a little bit differently. Um, there's a couple other streaming platforms that I'm not aware of, but Twitch and Mixer, like two of them, Twitch I'm mostly involved with. Um, take some time to learn uh, about streaming, how things work, uh, how chatbots work, how a broadcasting software works. Do the research first before you jump on the platform and just start streaming because you're only going to get so far with regards of starting a stream from scratch and not watching anybody. For me, I, I just started streaming and I learned a lot of stuff on the road um, to get it where it is now. So if anything, uh, there's a lot of musicians on the, on the music platform. I did see a couple Twitter posts from other streamer friends of mine that I know that um, – there are people that are starting to try to be as mentors. So, you know, if you are new and you're looking for help, uh, Twitter is a great way to reach out to a bunch of music streamers that are out there. Um, like I used to not use Twitter for a long time and I only use Twitter now on occasion because that's where most people from Twitch are actually like communicate and all sorts of stuff. So, um, but yeah, but to summarize, watch other people that you enjoy uh to learn how they stream and learn how they work their stream and maybe consider emulating that learn uh the easiest ways to use a broadcasting software um and you know you don't need a crazy setup you you, you only need one microphone a webcam a working webcam a decent computer and an inter interface um mm -hmm. there's more to it but you don't need you know 27 million things to start okay. streaming yeah, no, that's a beautiful way of putting it. And um, yeah, I think it's also like, you know, I, I like to bring up some points you said earlier, definitely, where it's like serving the audience versus serving yourself. 
And I think, you know, as soon as you start thinking about the audience, that's when, you know, more people become more engaged. And then the other aspect of like being respectful of other people's space, right? Like where you don't try to insert yourself into someone else's stream, like, oh, I'm going to go stream now, you know, bye, you know, like yeah. just trying to definitely, you know, put the hustle game down <laughs> for a second and just like figure out what's going on, be aware of the situation. And then things will start to appear more that way. It seems it's like it's just, it's just like how you were talking to Justin Jones about hustling after college. You know, he was doing the same kind of thing that I've been doing on Twitch where he goes out to jam sessions and meet meets and networks with a whole ton of other people um, and just tries to make good relationships with people first before you try to start networking and try to work with other people, you know, uh, I feel like he's, you know, another great example. You know, I also need to reach out to him. He's a good, he's a good friend of mine too, uh, or a good friend of ours, I should say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's is why I say it's so funny how I equate streaming on Twitch uh, to our music career livelihood outside of uh, gigging and all that sort of stuff. You know, how much those two worlds actually really can seem as one. Um, if you know how to, you know, put yourself in the right place at the right time, you know, that's great too. Knowing people is only going to get you so far, but is mm. making those opportunities happen out of who you network with and who you get to know and, you know, all that sort of stuff is what will really, I think, take you to the next level. What benefits do you see, musically speaking, from streaming on Twitch? I know that you do a lot of looping when you're on, on there and um, playing along with like, recordings and stuff like that so yeah maybe you could just go into musically speaking how this is all beneficial to you so a, de a disclaimer i will say uh my perspective uh originally has uh has changed a little bit since i've been on the platform now for a little over a year and a half um there's a lot of musicians that go out and are playing to you know links on youtube and there's technically nothing wrong with it you know it's like how we actively transcribe and 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 listen to recordings to shed to and stuff like that and learn parts. Um, I did that for a while uh, because it, some, it seemed like it was the easiest way to get started with just playing requests, as you will. Um, you know, with requests, how I work on my stream, anybody can come in onto my stream and request a song for free. They send a YouTube link, whether if I know how to play it or not. And I try to literally learn it on the spot. Improv, you know, the part, whether if I know it or... If there's enough space, I try to take artistic license to, um, you know, enhance the music uh, that is already being played in that sense. Um, my perspective has changed on that because I am always trying to uh, recognize I'm not trying to step on the toes of the musicians that already recorded something that is already, quote unquote, perfect. Um, so sometimes there are songs that are completely impossible for me to play. So I just skip that because I'm like. I'm not going to waste my time or energy to try to play something that I, you know, can't do or can't physically do. Sometimes those experiences can be like a test. Some people like to go in there and test people. Let's see how fast can you blast beat or how fast can, you know, do all these different crazy things as a drummer. Um, I'm one of probably the only few jazz drummers on Twitch uh, additionally. So I quote unquote have that upper hand, whereas, you know, there are a lot of other drummers that are really great friends of mine that, you know, can play more metal or rock stuff like that. Um, so at least if anything, I learn a little bit more about other styles of music um, from listening to a lot of these different kinds of requests, if you will. Mm. Um, you know, maybe I get new inspiration or new rhythmic ideas that I haven't heard before from a prog rock band. Maybe, you know, there's a jazz recording that somebody finds that I never heard of and uh somebody requested for me i'm like this is the most killing thing ever so there's pros and cons to the request system that i see a lot of people playing now on the other flip side i do improv loops i do you know covers uh so i try to vary up my stream a little bit now because i have this piano alongside and a loop pedal so it gives me the freedom to actually put myself in a creative space and try something completely different put myself in a vulnerable atmosphere where I'm forced to create on the spot. Uh, and if anything, I feel like it's a great way for me to practice uh, being in the moment, challenging myself in different ways, shapes, or forms. Um, and, you know, seeing how much more of a musician I can be than just a drummer. Uh, 
along those lines. So the beauty of Twitch music and I think the beauty of streaming in general is you can stream whatever you want uh, and the possibilities are endless with those regards. For me specifically, what I've been really trying to obtain as of late is to utilize my stream as a creative atmosphere. Uh, so additionally, if I'm bringing guests on stream, uh, when we're doing jazz trio stuff, or if I'm just trying to rock out and have a good time, I'll play drumless tracks or something. There's a lot of really killing drumless tracks that are out there that help me like keep my funk stuff all together. Um, you know, it, 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 the, there's honestly like unlimited list potential with it with regards of what people could play musically speaking on Twitch, because nobody's technically saying you have to do X, Y, and Z. Um, mm really comes down to what you ultimately want to be doing or what is your ultimate goal for streaming in general um and that, i think that's also regardless of what platform you do Re regardless whether you stream on facebook youtube uh twitch mixer um wherever else in those regards yeah, i think this will definitely motivate a lot of people to definitely look into these options and to really make a plan for themselves as to how um, which platform they want to use and how they want to get their music out there because uh, yeah this is definitely a tough time for a lot of performing musicians um, and you know those who have been establishing their presence online for a while uh, are acting as now mentors you know just naturally in this environment so uh, I'm glad that you took the time today to definitely show us your setup and how you do everything thing and your thoughts on the whole process no worries man i really appreciate you having me on uh it's been a very fun journey uh doing something different you know three or four years ago i didn't expect to start streaming music on twitch uh along those lines and to be quite honest uh i'm still working towards seeing how much bigger i can grow uh my stream my community in general uh and seeing what else more could come out from it you know I still am debating whether if I want to continue, consider it doing it full time. Um, the other challenge is, you know, I want to balance this between my, you know, performing lifestyle and going out to New York and networking with other musicians on the East Coast, too. So it's the ultimate challenge is how can I balance this between gigging and all that sort of stuff. But, mm -hmm. you know, if, if anything, if anything, it's been a nice, uh, consistent, uh, consistent, you know, paycheck every month for the time being. Um, and in the, in these times, you know, it's, it's, it's really great to be an online musician or an online content creator because, Hey, you know, you've been putting hours and hours into what, what you do on the internet and people are supporting you for what you do. So, yeah, it's a beautiful yeah. thing. So, uh, just so people know, if you have Amazon prime, you can actually get Twitch prime and that allows you to, uh, basically have the first tier subscription for any user. Is that correct? For any yes. Twitch? Yeah. So yeah. if you connect your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, you can subscribe to any streamer uh, you want to watch uh, for one month. You have to resubscribe every single month. Uh, it's not an automatic feature unless you decide to, like, you know, connect your PayPal account to uh, Twitch. But it, because t Twitch is owned by Amazon, you're giving a streamer free money. So, you know, <laughs> heck, if anybody wants to sub to my stream, you can give me. You know, yeah. free money where can people find you so uh if anybody wants to check out one of my streams you can go to twitch.tv slash dom Palumbi music uh i post pretty regularly on uh my instagram and youtube uh for information on my twitch streams a lot of the times i'm trying to bring over the content that i'm uh, posting on twitch to my other social media platforms so everything else on my social media is at dom Palumbi music um, and you can even go to my website at dompalumbiamusic.com to find out all more information on those. Um, and I stream usually three to four times a week uh, on Twitch. So, you know, come by, make a request, hang out, listen to some music and say hi. Don't don't be a stranger. Yeah, it's a fun time. I know that for sure. Had a good time the other day. <laughs> hey, Pete, I really appreciate you tech checking out and having me on, man. It's really a pleasure. Yeah, it's no problem, Dom. Yeah, definitely. So I uh, want to thank everyone for tuning in for another interview here on Jazz Biz 101, uh, where we take care of the music so you can get to the... Oh, where we take care of the business so you can get to the music. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> in that order. All right. And uh, yeah, so we're going to uh, sign off here. And uh, yeah, thank you everyone for checking in. All right. Everyone stay safe. Use hand sanitizer. Wash your hands.
I think we'll do, like, yeah, we'll do, like, two slices, uh, yes, so each so of us well. can have...